Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And while you're, go ahead, guys, collect the offering. And while you're doing that, put your hands together and welcome Dr. Ben Albert to the
Moses was the first priest. Moses went up on the mountain. God to Moses. Moses made intercession. He made intercession to Pharaoh. He made intercession for God to the people. The priest faces God. The people face the priest. The second priest was, was Aaron. Then we have the sons of Aaron who became the priest. and call that the Aaronic priesthood. And the priesthood continued its adaptation. And now we have the Melchizedekian priesthood. So priesthood is very important. This Shabbat, this Sabbath, is also Shabbat Hagol. Not only is it a regular Sabbath, but it is a special Sabbath that precedes a high Sabbath. The high Sabbath is Monday on your calendar, which is Passover. So now Monday is Passover. Then the next Shabbat is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which begins on sundown Tuesday. So it's a big as far as study is concerned. The portion is Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1, through Leviticus 8, 36. And the portion of the portion that I'm going to share with you this morning was about repentance, about biblical repentance. Let me turn you the, the portion. I spoke to Moses saying, If anyone should commit a breach of faith against the Lord, I to seek his name in a manner of deposit of security or through robbery, or if he oppressed his neighbor or has found something lost in mind of him, swearing falsely, in any of all things that people do to sin the robbery, he has said, realize his guilt, and will sore be took by robbery when he got in prison. Or the deposit that was committed to him on the lost thing that he found, or anything about which he had sworn falsely. He shall restore it in full and shall have fifth to it. And giving it him to whom it been to the day he realizes his gift. And he shall bring to praise a compensation of the Lord, a ray of blemish out of the heart, or equivalent for a gift offering. The priest shall atone for him for the Lord, and he shall give him for any of the things that may do and thereby come guilty. Leviticus 6, 1 through 7. We no longer have a physical wall steady on the right now. Therefore, the things that are in the world are dependent upon the temple cannot be done. It's what we refer to as temple dependent. Do we know no reason why God allowed the temple to be destroyed? We have some ideas and we have speculation and some understanding. Nevertheless, God allowed the temple in Jerusalem under the vehicle to be destroyed and established the temple with Abraham, the priesthood of the believer, the priesthood of the with the priesthood of the Mesodectic Order. But those who are not in the
Thank you. 